May justice prevail for Ashira. Now, Lake Victoria and its resources fuel the economies of Kenya, Tanzania, and Uganda. The lake provides 90% of Uganda's hydropower, besides being a source of water for major urban cities such as uh, Kampala, uh, Chigali, Mwanza, and Kisumu. A major use of the lake often ignored is transport, which came into formal effect in 1901. The sector has now been revived and has the potential to run half the economy of the lake region as Bramwell Buire now reports. As I leave you with that story, enjoy the rest of your viewing. My name is Brenda Zedaradido. A sign language interpreter is Gideon Miner. It is among the key developments that, if fully revived, can fuel the economy of the lake region and more so the five riparian counties that have a share of the lake, the Lake Victoria Maritime Transport. Lake Victoria is the second largest freshwater lake in the world after Lake Superior of North America. It is also Africa's largest lake and the largest tropical lake in the world. The lake has a surface area of 68,800 square kilometers. Lake Victoria is located in East Africa where it serves Kenya at 6%, Uganda at 45% and Tanzania at 49%. Due to its shallow depth, vast surface area and limited inflow it is vulnerable to climate change this has resulted in water hyacinth that has limited maritime transport goods from hinterland from congo from rwanda from burundi from uganda from tanzania and all those interland countries could easily reach uh, Lake Victoria, and then they are brought by by water up to Kisumu, and then raised to Mombasa for export. Uh, this was done up to up to uh, about 20 years ago. Uh, things were very good because uh, uh, every day there was a, a train bringing passengers and cargo. And uh, these cargoes were not just for Kisumu or for Kenya, they were for the other countries. And along the line, from Nairobi, as you pass through Kikuyu, you come Naivasha, Gilgil, Nakuru, uh, Molo, all those stations had woken up. There were small markets in those places. We embark on a journey a mission to transverse the entire lake from the port of Kisumu to the islands of the lake. Welcome to Luanda Kotieno. This is Siaya County. Residents of Siaya, for example, depend on the lake transport as the main and only means of transport to the islands of Takawiri, Rosinga, Mfangano and Mbita in the neighboring county of Homa Bay. There are two water buses that operate on this route. The water buses are preferred as the safest and most efficient mode of transport on Lake Victoria. We are currently running uh, two routes, that is uh, Luanda Kotieno Mbita and uh, Mbita Mfangano. Uh, this route is serviced by three uh, water buses. Uh, the Mfangano side we do three return trips. Uh, Luanda Kotieno, we have two vessels. So we have one that moves from Mbita to Luanda Kotieno. It does four return trips. We have uh, the second boat that does from uh, Mbita to Luanda Kotieno. That also does four return trips. When we arrive at Mbita in Homa Bay County, the landing site is busy. <laughs> Travelers boarding and luggage is being loaded on the water bus. The first water bus leaves at exactly 8 a.m. This sound marks the beginning of our journey, and for 45 minutes, we travel by water to Mfangano through Takawiri. 
But just what propelled this entrepreneur to venture into this mode of business? For the water bus, uh, we've been able to take our customers through a journey uh, from the wooden boats to the fully furnished, uh, serviced catamaran vessels that are compliant. Uh, so that means we bring in a vessel that is fully compliant with the Kenya Maritime. We bring a vessel that is safe. The way water bus vessel is designed, uh, it's safety everywhere. Because as you walk around here, you'll always see it's safety fast. So water bus vessels are fast, they're safe. Uh, the other thing, it's a reliable service. According to Kenya National Chambers of Commerce Kisumu Branch Chairman Israel Agina, there have been attempts by previous regimes to revive Kisumu Port and the Lake Victoria Maritime Transport. Uh, revival of the port uh, up to now requires a lot of injection of capital. And uh, as you know, counties' uh, development budgets are very minimal. They are, uh, they are less than even 20% of the total revenue. So you cannot uh, expect the, uh, the county government to pump in sufficient funds into the, into the rehabilitation of the port and uh, kick off. Uh, we also know that there were uh, harbors of ports within the lake in, in Kenya like Mbita and all these other places which were to be rehabilitated. Uh, once they are done, that will be an added advantage. But all these require money. The residents say they are proud of the water buses as they have over time proved to be reliable, dependable with minimal safety risks. I'm going to a water bus. I'm going to go to Kwanza. Because I'm going to go to Kwanza. I'm going to go to Kwanza. Ni kwa gana sumbuka na zunguka kisumu na ni sehemu ambayo ni ndefu sana na inachukua muda sana. Na shukuru sana na mzidi kuwa na usafiri kama huu ambao na okua muda. I've been traveling in this water bus. It is safe. It is safe. And the people working in it do handle people safely. Yeah. And that is... How, this is the only means that you can use when you are trans, when you want to go to the other side. It is very convenient because one, it is very timely. When I leave Kisumu by six, by around nine, I'm in Bita, so that I'm able to do whatever has taken me. And uh, initially, before these vessels came, uh, transport in this area was very difficult. It was sometimes making us to go, follow, beat, from Beta to Oma Bay, then to Kisumu. That means uh, you could not time or predict at what time you will reach. But since water bus came, we are able to move, we can time yourself and able to do your work within the time schedule that you would want. Despite efforts by the two water buses rolling the wheels of the economy of the riparian counties, residents feel there is a lot that remain untapped. The ability of Kisumu Port, I, I think uh, before it went down, uh, it was kind of uh, taking care of uh, more than 50% of uh, earnings in Kisumu because we had so many people employed by Kenya Ports Authority and by Kenya Railways. Before Kenya Ports Authority, we had East African Railways and Harbour Switchers, a combination of the two. So uh, now, you see we have a dry port somewhere in Kibos area, and uh, moving those ones to here is a problem. But uh, Kibos and uh, the port here is connected by rail, so uh, now those the cargoes are coming directly to the port. Uh, the business is good because some people travel from other areas using the water bus and the ferries to come and uh, do some business. You know, th these people dwell on uh, this, uh, this lake because they are, they are fishermen, they are uh, samaki sellers. Now, that, this is the only, pro uh, the only business which is uh, happening here. Like when you dock in Bita, you'll find quite a number of uh, people 
small scale business doing their business, selling refreshment. But uh, it is quite unfortunate that there are no states where they can do their business well. The motorbike people also benefit because immediately people land, they pick them. The small vehicles traveling to other areas are also there. They also reap leverage out of this transport. We've seen people moving goods faster because uh, you're able to know I have a wholesaler in Mbita. I can tell him to put my goods in water bus at the 9.30 trip. Uh, within 40 minutes, my goods are at Sena or at Yoki or whichever landing site. So I'm able to know. I, I, I don't necessarily have to move from my shop. I can se send those people and tell them, put them on the water bus and they'll be delivered safely. Uh, previously, you'd see people um, when they used to use the boats, especially the people with shops in the island. In case of rough weather, as we all know, the life and the goods the one has to give so the easiest was the goods so these people would throw maybe sugar cement and everything in the in the water and like right now goods are in the water bus they are secure they are safe they get to the island safely we've also seen people uh now commuting from home and like before they had to live in the mainland so uh the development of people living at home they are able to you know uh, structures coming up. There are hotels. We have Takawiri, uh, Victoria Sands, just because water bus exists. So they are able to, to boost the tourism. But just how unique are the water buses to have gained the much confidence of the residents for the last 12 years? Our vessels are built in a standard way that meets all the maritime requirements and even surpass standard by some margin. So our vessels, their construction from the hulls are segmented into watertight compartments in which if you have a leakage for the first compartment, it doesn't say or flow through to the other compartments. Again, we have build pumps. Whenever there's a small leakage, the, the, the lower limit of the build, build pump with the float switch that activates and the water goes overboard. Again, we have alarm sensors that sense any small leakage on the hulls. So in whichever way we are safe from grounding caused by leakage or something. Um, our routes are also designed in a way that surveyed to be more safe. So it's rare for us to come across rocks, submerged rocks, wreckages or any other stuff. Our staff super trained the best in the market on this lake. Maritime training in Kenya is still not that strong. We have two mainly known colleges. There are one starting up in Kisumu. The, the railway one which is not yet fully operational. There is Bandari in Mombasa. But most of us have, have their certification from Tanzania and across the world. Yeah. So it is a potential? Yeah, maritime sector is potential. But it depends on the investment. Because we may have so much trained personnel, but the vessels operating in the lake are few, unless you go to the standard of deep sea, which absorbs people in numbers. On Lake Victoria... Despite the existence of the water buses, most of the islands that dot Lake Victoria are reached only through moving water vessels and motorboat engines. This, however, is slowly dying following the fear to transport bulk goods from the mainland to the islands due to the increased boat accidents. I'll commend our regulators, that is Kenya Maritime Authority, uh, the introduction of Kenya Coast Guard has come in also handy in ensuring that uh, um, our, we are able to serve our customers uh, sufficiently. Uh, of course, we'll have challenges uh, because this is a very unique field. So sometimes getting the right staff is a challenge. This is because uh, many people don't see the value of you know in, uh, going to school and do maritime courses but uh it's a challenge that we encounter on daily basis but uh 
our request is to for for the institutions you know like uh, when we are talking about courses that people need to take let's encourage guys to do maritime courses naval architect you know um stcw courses uh, that's one challenge the other challenge is our landing sites because as a, as an investor i it's me to take care of the landing sites um, the government has not uh, provided landing facilities for us so the, it comes at a cost because there is additional maintenance uh, and you know remember when you put up such a, 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 a an infrastructure you don't limit it to yourself so there are other users who are also using it so the burden of care you know it's not squarely on you but uh, you have to uh, do maintenance for these services for for the, for the facilities um, the other challenge uh, people talk about water higher seed it has not uh, affected us yet on this side but uh, there's a route we had to stop uh, between uh, Homa Bay and uh, Sembo Bay this is because of the rampant uh, you know what I have said then you know we sell a reliable service so sometimes you'd go across and coming back it's a problem because the place is all back, um, uh, clogged but uh, uh, we've seen efforts uh, we can always uh, encourage uh, further but uh, so far so good Following the cries by the residents here on the need to expand the routes to neighboring counties, Ani Wanjiru says they have plans to expand the operation to East African countries, but only if clear policies and legal framework will be laid to ensure smooth operations. Okay, as far as Lake Victoria is, is concerned, uh, we have uh, plans underway to commence uh, a route in Kampala City beginning of uh, 2023. Uh, COVID came and really messed with our planning and our expansion planning. But uh, as we, we, we've seen, we've been able to uh, build more vessels. So of course, our plans are there to expand to Uganda, the first route being within Kampala City, beginning of the year. Plans are there to do Tanzania as well. And then we'll move to Mombasa. Uh, because we've had uh, a demand in Mombasa, yeah, yeah. Okay, me naona wazidi kutengeneza vyombo kama hivi, vita tuokolea muda na tutakuwa na cheap means of transport kwa pande zote za Kenya, Uganda na Tanzania, East Africa. I think what should be there, one, they should, they should ensure that there is proper security, all the vessels traveling along the lake, they have the safety measures that are required. Again, uh, more youth should be trained so that they can be able to handle because it also provides employment opportunity for the youth. So that means we have more people who are trained and can handle these vessels so that uh, it's, a, it's a means of transport. Another thing is just to improve the places where they dock so that they have a, a enough space because the land along the lakes are also being grabbed those ones should be stopped they should be really proper land where they can land without any problem this has also been a good thing it has reduced the traffic the trailer traffic on kisumu busia road and also most likely uh, malaba from uh, nakuru and so on so these are good things and uh, we believe that uh, if they are fully uh, commissioned, especially the meter gauge railways, which is there, as you know, it's very slow. The current, uh, the current generation are people who are moving very fast uh, and uh, they would rather have SGR because SGR is slightly faster than uh, the one we have right now. And see, it is only coming once a week because it doesn't have that attraction. This is why it is coming once a week and going back once a week. We would like to have these things always on the track. The 
map the navigational map that is currently there is a map that was used uh, during the colonial time so uh, conversations have been going uh, on with kenya maritime to ensure that we either amend or something is done about the map but as a water bus service we're not looking at going um, cross country it's more if we say we are operating in um, uh, Kenya, it's within Lake Victoria, Kenyan water. So if we go to uh, Uganda, it's within Uganda water. Uh, partially because we've had, we've tried the cross country before and uh, because of, you know, various issues, intergovernmental issue, we were not able to really continue uh, with the service. But it's something, if everything is aligned and the East Africa community, you know, we have a parliament, so if they are able to align some of these factors that uh, led us not to continue the service, why not? With the government embarking on massive rehabilitation of the Kisumu ports and pyres, the traders and maritime investors are happy because they have new opportunities to increase investment in the islands or on the lake transport. Government, which has just been replaced, started rehabilitating the ports. Because it's, it is something that was there, it's not new, but they rehabilitated it. And they also rehabilitated the, uh, the ship, uh, ship uh, production area or assembly area, which are now working. And uh, they rehabilitated MV Uhuru. And they also went further and started construction of MV Uhuru 2, which uh, is almost complete. And uh, these are things that are going to increase uh, traffic between Kenya and Uganda, Kenya and Tanzania, and uh, Rwanda, Burundi would also benefit, and Congo. Uh, the recent development by the government of building a jetty at Kenya Pipeline was also a very good thing. Unfortunately, it was not coordinated with our neighboring countries and almost four or five years down the line the receiving facility in Uganda is not yet ready and this means that we have to keep on transporting petrol either by road or by rail wagons uh, loaded onto MV. The national government, county governments under the Lake Region Economic Bloc are the key drivers for the revival of Lake Victoria maritime transport. Political goodwill is paramount in ensuring that the once vibrant sector is back to its former self. We are looking forward to receiving cargo from Mombasa for Uganda and uh, Northern Tanzania. Uh, I've seen recently some billets being loaded uh, to go to the neighboring countries and fertilizers, sugar, and uh, even cotton seeds have been plying the lake. And uh, these are things that are good. I know that uh, the blue economy is yet to be exploited because uh, we have aquaculture, which is in its beginning stages. We have uh, cage culture, which uh, is uh, not fully fledged. And uh, we are still importing Chinese fish into Kisumu. Although Kisumu has the second largest freshwater lake in the world. For over 20 years, maritime transport on Lake Victoria has been dormant. There has been little or no maritime activities. Large vessels that used to ply the waters connecting the mainland to various islands either stalled or were withdrawn by the Kenya Railways. This grossly affected the once booming island trade and also affected the mass movement of people and goods to the island and to the mainland. But that is now set to be history thanks to the renewed efforts by the Kenya Ports Authority and the Kenya Railways to revamp the rundown pyres. With the newly refurbished multi-billion shilling Kisumu port set to bounce back into active maritime business, the pyres are